welcome to 2022. Um, I mean, we're quite far into 2022 now. Well, we're not, we're like a week into 2022, but welcome to 2022 here on this channel. It has been a while since I've uploaded a video. I'm back, I'm back in business. And I thought I would do the classic video that literally everyone else on YouTube has done because we love original content. And that is 2022 resolutions, goals, kind of vibes. Before I get into the goals, I think it's important to reflect on my past year because how else am I going to know what I kind of want to do this year if I don't look back at the last year. 2021 was, I wrote notes for this by the way, because I deadass keep forgetting what like the whole of the year looked like. Like I think it's very easy to focus on one particular mood or one particular season if you will. And if you're anything like me towards the end of the year and when it gets much darker and it's a little bit more miserable and I end up thinking that the whole of 2021 sucked. When that's not the case. But 2021 was definitely the year of hair dye, therapy, self dates lockdowns and then reapply for therapy so that is what my 2021 looked like i thought we would start from the beginning we'd start from january because obviously that's where all <laughs> years start okay before i continue i just want to say grab a coffee grab a snack grab a tea 2021 was a big roller coaster now i was so anxious in january 2021 for what <laughs> spent so much of like the first week of January 21 just like crying which is not how you want to start the year it's kind of hard especially when you're struggling with your mental health to see everyone else being like yeah life is so great in January let's like completely seize the day let's completely turn our life around so my anxiety was high obviously we were still in peak pandemic I mean we, we still are but anyway we'd just gone into a lockdown or we were going into a lockdown I can't remember but my anxiety was super high throughout like January and February I was able to like really work on my anxiety more so than ever and I was really lucky to be locked down with four of my like closest friends that I lived with it meant that January although it was like a bit of like a turbulent time in terms of like my anxiety and my mental health it was also like one of my favorite parts of the year drag race was on bake off maybe was on there was another thing that was on and we just had like kind of like a really good time obviously there was that massive snow day it literally never snows in london and it snowed and everyone went out into the park near me and everyone was building snowmen it was such a cute wholesome time and i feel like because the whole world was in absolute crap shit yeah, having everyone have like this cute snow day like we used to do when we were younger was like so wholesome and so cute but anyway i worked with some really cool brands obviously it's veganuary now and it was then so i got to work with like subway that was freaking cool peak me in my career so far working with like subway i don't know if that's a cool thing to say or if i sound really like dweeby being like subway was like my favorite brand to work with going into like the spring period is when I started therapy. So I applied for therapy in 2020 and it came through in 2021. So throughout February, March, April time maybe is when I started my therapy and my therapy was counseling. So it was a bit more for my low mood. It wasn't actually for my anxiety because basically when I went into the healthcare system, we were like, your low mood is worse than your anxiety. And I know how to deal with anxiety more than I did how to deal with my mood at the time. So I went back into therapy. That was a godsend to me to be able to overcome a lot of issues I had with feeling sad because a lot of my issues when it was with being sad was I had like this fear of being sad and that things ending and stuff, which is definitely something I still hold on to now. And I know I have a lot of things to overcome in that sense but definitely talking about it and working through it with my counsellor very much helped and it was very much necessary for my like summer time that was not a good time I also moved house in spring I've, now I'm here so this is like my actual home which is kind of wild and I keep going through phases of needing to completely change my room around I literally only just changed my room around at the beginning of the year or no, just at the end of last year because I, mean, I was getting I was getting that ick vibe from it you know anyway so summer 2021 that is when if you've been following me you know all of these things I'm saying that is when I lost my dog and that is when I moved out of my family home so that was like huge turmoil for me two of the biggest changes that I think I've ever experienced in my whole life were literally a week apart um, and my birthday was nicely sandwiched in there so that was a bit of a, a rocky birthday but obviously that happened and then that really set my mental health not back because it wasn't bad, as bad as it had been but it was definitely a hiccup among the 
the way but so that meant like over summer I was really trying to do more things to like actually like work on my mental health and put myself first I was like going on a lot more road trips I was going on more like staycations with my friends and just kind of like trying to do more to like make myself feel happy because I was like in a really low period which is definitely something that I wouldn't have been able to do before so there's that positive thing to reflect on I was definitely trying a lot harder than I had done previously obviously I definitely had it like a lot of a period of being like I don't want to do anything which is completely valid too but then I was sort of able to like pull myself out of that at the same time this kind of way I also went on my first like actual self date if you will um, but this was like this must have been like April time to be fair and then I went on another one later in the year but those like two self dates I had were two of my fondest memories I think I have of 2021 because especially my first one in like April time I felt like I was proper able to be with myself completely calmly and happily and not tear apart my tear apart myself so yeah I was solely by myself just having the best time and I felt so happy doing that and it had been so long since I've been able to like actually do that it was a really good time and they were, they were kind of like the most like transformative times if you will and I would really recommend anyone who feels like they need to work on themselves a little bit and their own mental health to try and take yourself out even if it's just like for a walk or for a coffee it doesn't have to be like going off to Brighton for a weekend um, or whatever it literally can be whatever you want just so you can like try and work with looking after yourself that kind of thing I actually dyed my hair just before all the turbulent stuff happened so June was like blonde hair Helena started and then I couldn't like fully live up to the expectations of what blonde hair Helena needed to be because I was sad <laughs> I couldn't like show her off we don't need her anymore because the latter half of the year I didn't really write any notes off because I didn't do as much and I think from probably about October, September through to December really is when my year kind of got worse just in terms of my mental health. Everything else was thriving. Like it was only internally that I became a little bit worse. And the, the same thing happened the year before. So it's definitely like a winter period thing for me. Obviously I've spoken about this in like all of my videos. That was when I started to definitely fall out of love a little bit more with like what I was doing. Ever since the summer really, I had slowly begun to lo lose that desire to want to put content out there. Comparison started feeding in a lot more. My own personal body image started feeding in a lot more. So I definitely, no. Oh. I definitely wasn't vibing as much as I had been. So yeah, it became much harder to basically do my job, which is frustrating. I think it was basically just a big burnout period of going through just like a rough time. I think after that, I was like, didn't really have too much of a break. I mean, obviously I had a break, but then because I was like ready to like, had to kind of keep going and you kind of got that like hustle culture mentality of like, you need to keep going. Otherwise you're gonna just fail. But obviously that's not true. And if you keep trying to do things when you're not in the right headspace to do stuff, God, sorry. It's gonna negatively impact you more and you're gonna fall out of love with what you're doing and not be able to do it more so. Anyway, so basically that happened. Um, now, obviously I still absolutely love what I do, but I did need to take that break in like December time because I was having a really bad relationship with my reflection. And I went into detail a little bit about this in my last video, the only video I uploaded in the whole of December. And I think that was sort of like really impacting my ability to edit and stuff, obviously, because whenever I'm editing, whenever I'm filming, I'm just looking at myself. And that's a lot of hours of the day to be constantly looking at yourself. Like I don't think many people are designed to be able to, well, to have that much of a close relationship with your reflection, particularly if your body image isn't great. And I think that is sort of where it all started to go a little bit. Now, I think I've said this before, but like previously when my low mood hits, it's just generally been about like life. But this is the first time probably since I was younger that my bad mood was ever, my low mood was ever like associated with my appearance, which is really frustrating and really hard because you know, you work so hard to overcome so many things and you do, and then something else hits you. And it's like, although my body image now is very different to how it was when I was a teenager and the things that impact me now aren't the same things that impacted me then, it's like you find new things that you're sort of pick at yourself about, which is frustrating. <laughs> Cause I'm like, hello, you spent so long overcoming, like just dealing with insecurities it's annoying when you kind of new ones develop, but like that's kind of the world we live in where they're kind of always gonna come and go. But because I was kept looking at myself so much and because of this, this is my like job, it was very hard for me to do. Anyway, 
<laughs> I'm acting like this was ages ago, but this was literally last month. Like I literally had the full month off practically because I was like, I can't look at myself when I'm recording. As I said in my last video that I have applied for therapy now and I am on the waiting list 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 for therapy and i will keep you updated on how that goes but we're going into 2022 with the same vibes as we were going into 2021 so overall the year was a roller coaster there were so many highlights in that time i feel like i've just focused on the negatives but like there were so many highlights in that as well so with that being said this is the part of the video where i'm actually going to talk about my healthy habits i'm going to put in place in 2022 or at least try to put in place for 2022 and for that i'm going to need my laptop also how cute is this my sister made this with goals and resolutions in general i think it's important to try and make them realistic but mine kind of focus more on like taking where i am now and making myself happier i guess and like healthier in general but you know slow and steady wins the race because that's not going to be an easy task my first one which i would say is probably going to be one of the hardest in terms of like actually physically doing it because it's an everyday kind of thing is write down one thing every day that you like about yourself so i've got a little notebook and so far so good i have written one every day by the end of the year i want to have 365 things that i like about myself that can be appearance based that can be personality based that can be mentality based it can literally be whatever i want it to be when you've got one insecurity and it becomes very prevalent then that's what your brain immediately goes to and there's so many different parts of you that aren't that insecurity so this is helping me helping me realize those things and by the end of the year i have 365 things another one of those types of things is write down one memory for each week I saw someone else do this on TikTok ages ago and I was like that's a brilliant idea This is also one of those ones that will probably be quite hard for me to achieve But I'm gonna try and I've got a little jar and I set myself a little alarm on my phone every Sunday To write down one memory for the week because then at the end of the week I'll have 50 something <laughs> 52. Okay, I don't know. And I think it'd be quite nice to reflect on and have those like little moments that you can forget. This, why have I started with the hardest three ones? Read one book a month slash 10 books a year. Now I've already seen people with their like lists of like 50 books or 55 or 60 books a year. I read two last year and as you can see, I have this massive stack of books behind me. Now, I have a bad habit of buying books and never reading them because I'm really enticed by books and like I'll read the blurb or whatever it's called at the back and be like, I want to read you. And then I'll have this inability to actually, actually read them. So one book a month or just under one book a month this year, but I'm hoping that it will help just feel a little bit more peaceful, reduce my screen time, which is point number four, is reduce my screen time. Now I haven't set like an actual goal for this one because as long as I can get it down, then I'm happy with that because obviously I work on social media I work on social media so I'm on my phone a lot but also I am just kind of like addicted to my phone and I worked out my current average is about seven hours a day I mean this is from December but about seven hours a day which equates to I did the math 106 days a year I spend on my phone if I was only on my phone for the whole of last year I would have taken up a third of that time that is horrendous I don't know why I'm like yeah I work on my phone like I also scroll through TikTok for about three hours a day so the book thing is going to help with that so those kind of go hand in hand together so they're like my main like mental health ones in terms of social media and work i have put my main one is to stay consistent <laughs> with a work schedule and i've wrote uh, upload four videos a month which is basically one video a week which i have done for 2020 i think i uploaded almost two videos a week or one video a week and i will do it again but i think because i had sort of run out of like that sort of passion per se and i wasn't really sure what i was doing by the end of the year i was actually like i don't know what videos i want to do i don't know what videos people want to see like i was in such like a weird space with it all like i had no passion to leave, even create one video a week 2022 we're gonna bring it back <laughs> i think because i've had some time off i feel so much better about youtube in general and like being here and coming back and sort of just making better content i also want to figure out the types of things that i want to make how i want to make them make them good now obviously i may have a week off if i go away at some point but fingers crossed i get to go away along those lines i want to sort of just like learn more become a little bit more passionate about creating things again i've always loved editing always loved editing but i think because it became a little bit of a chore towards the end not a chore but i wasn't enjoying it as much basically that i started to fall out of love with even that side so i think i just want to like learn a bit more like how to actually edit how to actually create things do 
colour stuff, I don't know. And along those lines, I started using a film camera last year, um, which I love. But I want to learn more about like actually taking film camera photos and like... I've got two film cameras, one of them you can just about see there. That one is really hard to use. <laughs> taking more pictures, but taking more like one-off pictures rather than standing in front of a camera for like three hours to try and get a good picture. <laughs> Not three hours, but you know, you know what I mean, rather like just get more pictures of the people I love and the things I love because that was one of my favourite parts of 2021 like having all these film camera photos so 2022 we are going to have more of those I've also put this down for 2022 now this might not happen but me and my friends have been meaning to start a podcast for about pre-pandemic not pre-pandemic yeah pre-pandemic 2022 if all things go well will hopefully be the year of a podcast hopefully. I think I have this thing where I really feel like I need things to be really quite perfect before I do them and that's the thing that stops me from uploading YouTube videos, it stops me from making TikToks. Like TikToks are literally 15 second videos but in my head I'm like wow that needs to be like a cinematic art piece and I think that's why I put off doing actual big projects I guess because I'm so like it needs to be perfect when actually you just kind of need to start things and I feel like I feel like I'm ready to do that this year and I feel much better about work and social media and having a bit more of a passion and I'm excited to just share more things and maybe just like not be try and be as per perfect oh hello <laughs> so as I said on the one hand I want to get better at like filming and editing and like creating actual like important things but then at the same time I don't want to put things off so it's like finding that balance of like having those fun random videos that I love to do but then also having those like important things that take a little bit longer to make not even important but like those like actual videos with a purpose i guess but like it's like having both of those on my channel because i don't want to just be like one thing does that make sense one of the other things i want to do is find my personal style a bit more now i didn't want to say like personal style because i think my style varies a lot this year i want to like experiment more with making outfits and like making like really cool things come together rather than just sort of like seeing where the fashion trends go because I think it's very easy to like get sucked into like fashion trends and stuff but I just want to find a little bit more the types of clothes that I want to wear like I think I did that a lot during 2021 like my fashion sense has changed a lot some outfits are horrendous some outfits are amazing this year I want to like actually come in with a force just wear things that make me feel good because as I said like I think that will really help with like my mentality towards myself too like you can't change what you look like but you you can change how you kind of like express yourself and how you present yourself to the world and I think confidence makes a huge difference and I think if you're confident in what you're wearing speaking like how you're doing you're doing good well I've got a couple more things one of them is cook more wholesome meals I used to cook so much and I have been making some good meals in 2022 like I made this amazing gnocchi thing the other day like it was gnocchi and smoked tofu and kale and stuff. it was really good I want to like do more of that you know like make pasta like from scratch do a lot more things that are a bit more creative in the kitchen and that expands to like other areas of my life as well I just want to start doing things that as I said I don't feel like I need to be perfect for like taking up new not hobbies per se but like just trying more things like, me and my friends are going to a pottery making class in a couple of weeks couple of I don't know we haven't booked it but We've booked it. It's like one of those like voucher things. So we haven't booked the date, but we've booked it, you know? Things like that where you just kind of go and have fun and you don't have to think about like whether or not the outcome is gonna be perfect or like whether the outcome is gonna lead to a, like a long-term hobby, like just doing things because you enjoy them and they don't have to be, you don't have to be good at them, you know? And the final thing is I wanna go on more self dates. When I took myself away, I feel like I was like proper treating myself. As I said, that is like the key for all of these 2022 goals is looking after myself. Easier said than done. Obviously, I don't need to think that turn January the 1st, I was like, right, life has changed. I only like everything about myself. I'm gonna work really hard. Realistically, for the first like three days, four days, whatever day I'm on now, six days. I have watched almost three seasons of Pretty Little Liars. I'm not mad about it. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. That's how I spent a lot of my hours since the new year. So it's not like January 1st happened and I was like, right, new person. And I don't think you should stress about like completely transforming your life because January can still be pretty crap time. Like the weather is bad right now. Like it's so bad. I'm, I'm lucky I've got the lighting for this to be fair. It was not like this yesterday, which is kind of like prevents me from wanting to do a lot of things and go outside. And obviously with everyone else is like thriving it's very hard to see that on social media be careful not to completely compare yourself to other people right now because as i said i've written all these down and it's not just a case of overnight being able to do them these are more like long term how i want to 
put in place healthy habits to be able to achieve this year and to be able to basically just benefit my mental health. It's all about my mental health. <laughs> that is the most important thing to me right now. Because I just know when my mental health is better, I'm nicer. I'm able to do more, I'm able to work more, I'm able to be more productive, like I'm able to see my friends more, be kinder to other people. I'm just better. <laughs> I think that's about it. Oh my God, I said that's about eight and I've listed about 10. You know, it may be a hard year because I was not expecting 2021 to be as hard as it was, but alas, <laughs> let me know what kind of things you would love to do in 2021, um, 2022. <laughs> then maybe you can look back to this video in 2023, which is a disgusting word to say, and you can like see if you've done any of the things. And if you haven't, then that's also fine, because as I said, am I gonna be able to read a book a month? Who freaking knows? I will keep you updated. But we are gonna take yourself on more self-dates. We are gonna record more, because you can come with me on those self-dates. Like, let's take ourselves on dates together. Does that count? I don't know if that counts. <laughs> Anyway, welcome back to 2022. Thank you so much for sticking around with me through 2021. I feel like we went through it. We did go through it and we went through it together. So here is to 2022. My God, my hair. Right, okay. See you in the next one. Please like and subscribe and happy 2022. Disgusting. <laughs>